heart of the vibrant Congolese music scene amidst the rhythms that pulse through the streets and the melodies that echo through the souls of its people, emerges a figure whose artistry transcends borders and captivates hearts. This is the story of Fair Gola. Welcome to Muse Cafe's iconic trail. Before we dive in, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and click the notification bell so you never miss any new uploads. Gola, whose full name is Herb Gola Bataring, is a Congolese singer, songwriter, and performer born on March 3, 1976, to Victor Gola and Marie Makis in Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of the Congo. He is widely recognized for his contributions to Congolese music, particularly in the genres of sukus and dumbo and rumba. Ferrer Gola's passion for music blossomed early. Gola's journey in the music industry began at a young age, deeply influenced by the rich musical heritage of Congo. He started singing in church choirs and local bands, honing his vocal skills and stage presence. His father, a relatively well-off man, likely envisioned music as a cherished pastime for his son, not a professional pursuit. However, the untimely death of his father, when Fair was barely a teenager, dramatically altered the course of his life and musical career. This life-altering event undoubtedly reshaped Fair Gola's path, potentially pushing him to embrace music, not just for passion, but also for potential stability and purpose. As the youngest member of his family, at the time, the loss of his father may have instilled in him a sense of responsibility to help support his family. Music, with its promise of success and financial stability, likely became not only a passion, but also a means to fulfill his familial obligations and provide for his loved ones. This transformative experience fueled Fair Gola's journey driving him to pursue his musical aspirations with determination and dedication, ultimately shaping him into the influential artist he is today. With his father no longer present, Faragola's mother embarked on a journey seeking work opportunities in Angola to provide for the family's needs. This decision reflected the resilience and determination of a mother striving to ensure the well-being and stability of her children in the face of adversity. Faragola honed his musical skills by performing with various street groups between 1991 and 1995. This period of, of hustle paid off. He caught the attention of both Wenge Musica and Kofi Olomide's band, Courtier Latin International. Ultimately, he chose to join the group Wenge Musica. A decision that would propel him to stardom. At the pivotal age of 21, Faragola found himself navigating a crucial juncture in his career. Tensions within Wingay Musica were escalating, leading to the band's official split. He chose to remain loyal to Wera Sun, who formed Wengay Musica Masonmere, a smaller faction resulting from the division. This marked a significant turning point for the Congolese music scene, as both Wenge Musica Maison Mir and the newly formed Wenge Musica BCBG represented distinct artistic visions and styles within the genre. 
Undeterred by the internal conflicts, he quickly established himself as a rising star within Wenge Musica Meso. His captivating vocals, stage presence, and dancing ability made him a crowd favorite and a role model for younger musicians. Fair thrive under Wera Sun's mentorship for seven years. However, his rising popularity and potential influence reportedly caused unease among Wera Sun's inner circle. Allegedly concerned about losing control over contracts and finances, they are said to have intentionally sown discord between Fair Gola and Wera Sun. This included tactics like blocking communication, further isolating the protege from his mentor, disillusioned by the declining communication and manipulative tactics. Fair eventually reached a breaking point. While Fair Gola was highly influential as the band's second in command, major financial decisions remained with Wera Sun and the administrators. However, when Wera's son agreed to allow Fair and Baby Endom, the other second in command, to present contracts and receive a percentage, it reportedly threatened the administrator's financial control. The escalating internal conflicts and communication breakdown with Wera's son ultimately prompted Fair Goa's departure from Wenge Music Amazon. Mere in 2004, this marked the end of an era and the beginning of a new chapter in his career one where he would forge his own path. In 2004, Farid Gola, along with his friends JDT Molopwe and Bill Clinton Kalonji, formed the short-lived Les Marquis. Les Marquis. However, the group's lifespan was short-lived, lasting only about a year. Leadership conflicts and a reluctance to accept Farid's prominent role within the group ultimately led to its disbandment within that short time frame. Despite an offer to rejoin Wenge Musica Mason Mir, Fair Gola remained hesitant. The animosity he faced upon his departure left a bitter taste. Furthermore, his initial attempts to form his own band were hampered by financial constraints. Sponsors, fearing to upset were a son with whom they had existing deals, were reluctant to offer support. Faced with these limitations, Faragola made a surprising move. Joining Colfi Olomide's Quartier Latin, this decision further fueled the existing tension with Wera Sun's camp, seen as a major betrayal. However, his stay with Quartier Latin was short-lived less than two years. Feeling prepared to embark on a solo career, he left to pursue his own artistic vision. Honing his skills with, with Wenge Musica Maison Mir and brief stints with Les Marquis and Quartier Latin, Farid Gola ventured out on his own in 2003. The initial years were dedicated to establishing his solo identity and fan base. He released singles, collaborated with other African artists, and steadily built his reputation. A pivotal moment arrived in 2006 with the release of his debut solo album, Since Entered It. The album's success propelled Fair into a prolific period. Throughout the next decade, he released a string of acclaimed albums, including Kwai Asteria Toy and the later Dynasty. However, Farigola's solo career wasn't without challenges. 
It was a journey marked by both triumph and the ever-present current of rivalries that ripples through Congolese music. Strained relationships with his former band leaders, Wera Sun and Kofi Olomide began after his departures from their respective groups, Wenge Musica Maison Maison Mir and Quartier Latin International. Reportedly, conflicts with Wera Sun escalated to a personal level, involving public insults and alleged behind-the-scenes tactics to undermine fair success. This fueled a decade of clashes between their musical groups, with fans drawn into the rivalry. While tensions simmered with Kofi Olomide as well, Wera Sun's actions seem to have posed the greater challenge. Fortunately, recent reconciliations offer a more peaceful chapter in Faragola's remarkable career. Despite the challenges, he has solidified his place as a legend in Congolese music. However, the ever-present current of rivalries took on a new form with the rise of another musical powerhouse, Fali Ipupa. In the heart of the Congolese music scene, a rivalry for the ages was brewing. Faragola, a powerhouse vocalist with electrifying stage presence, and Fali Ipapa, known for his smooth vocals and captivating dance moves, once shared the stage in Quartier Latin. But beneath the surface, a simmering tension began to take root, hinting at a future clash that would dominate the industry. This simmering tension between Faragola and Fali Epupa would become a defining chapter in Faragola's story, a rivalry that would redefine Congolese music. <laughs> The rivalry between Fergola and Fali Ipopa is complex and has been a major topic of discussion within Congolese music. Unlike other long-standing rivalries, their common history is relatively short. Some potential factors that fueled the fire, generational competition, both artists were positioned as prominent figures in the new generation of Congolese music, potentially vying for the same audience and recognition. Alleged personal conflict, personal disagreements between the two artists have been rumored, though their accuracy remains unconfirmed. Regardless of the reasons, the constant negativity surrounding this rivalry often fueled by their respective fan bases, casts a shadow over the industry's potential. While competition can be a positive force, this negativity has become a major point of discussion. Imagine the creative possibilities if these talented artists joined forces, or at least put aside their differences. A reconciliation between Ferragola and Fali Epopa along with their fan bases, could have a significant positive impact on the Congolese music scene. It would promote unity. A united fan base would create a stronger platform for Congolese music to reach new audiences. Inspire innovation. Collaborations could lead to exciting new musical expressions enriching the genre. Set a positive example. A peaceful resolution could inspire a more collaborative environment for all Congolese musicians. The onus lies not just with the artists, but also with the fans. Moving beyond blind loyalty and embracing a spirit of unity is crucial for the future of Congolese music. Fair Gola's legacy is still unfolding. He remains a vibrant figure in Congolese music, and his influence continues to shape the sound and spirit of a nation. A family man, Farah has been married for approximately a decade and is a father to a significant number of children. Nurturing not just his family, Farah Gola is also known for his philanthropic efforts, although he prefers to keep them private. Despite his desire for privacy, Reports show acts of generosity, such as funding scholarships for hundreds of students and assisting mothers with hospital bills. He even has a foundation dedicated to charitable work, though it maintains a relatively low profile. The foundation's focus areas are reportedly in education and healthcare, ensuring a brighter future for underprivileged youth and families. 
Farah Gola's journey is a testament to the raw power of talent and unwavering determination. From the bustling streets of Kinshasa to the electrifying stages across the globe, his voice has captivated audiences for over two decades. We've witnessed his rise within Wenge Musica, the internal conflicts that led him to forge his own path, and the remarkable success of his solo career. Despite facing numerous challenges, including ostracization within Wenge Musica Mesa Mirror, financial obstacles as a solo artist, and lingering rivalries, Fergola has demonstrated remarkable resilience. However, perhaps one of the most difficult trials he has endured was the loss of his younger brother Guy in 2023, who was also a member of his band. <laughs> Despite this devastating loss, Fair Gola has continued to persevere, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to his music and his unwavering determination to overcome adversity. His ability to navigate through personal tragedy while maintaining his dedication to his craft is a testament to his strength and resilience as an artist and as an artist and as an individual. His dedication to his craft continues to inspire a generation of musicians. His captivating vocals and electrifying stage presence leaving an undeniable mark on Congolese music. Fair Gola's story is far from over. He remains a vibrant figure in Congolese music, and his influence will continue to shape the sound and spirit of a nation. His legacy is one of exceptional talent, unwavering determination, and the enduring power of music to bring people together. The melody may change, but the rhythm of Congolese music, rich in its history and vibrant in its future, will undoubtedly keep playing on. Thanks to Arcos for their collaboration on this project. If you enjoyed this exploration of Farragola's story, let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to share your favorite Farragola song. Thanks for watching Miss Cafe. <laughs>